Hello YouTube, Stefan Hartman here, PA, exercise science specialist, and provider at Iron Direct Primary Care. Today I'm going to bring you a subject that I find just so cool, low-dose naltrexone, LDN therapy. It's cheap, has a great safety profile, and has a plethora of opportunities to utilize it for a variety of conditions. Let's talk a bit about the history here how it was discovered. It was found by Dr. Bihari uh, back in the mid 80s, who found it effective in helping AIDS patients improve their immune systems, help them uh, die less from diseases. Um, in the meantime, there's been a lot of studies done on it. So what all can LDN treat? Well, there's some pretty good studies showing that it helps for Crohn's disease. Um, it's more well known in alcohol and opiate use disorder. That's where it's FDA approved. But when we look at things like fibromyalgia, multiple sclerosis, some autoimmune skin disorders like Haley Haley and chronic pain syndromes, we're seeing newer and better studies showing that LDN is really safe and helps these people. Uh, that's in psychiatry is how I was exposed to uh, naltrexone in the first place, and I saw it being used to help alcoholics and um, narcotic dependent patients. We use that very high doses there. And at those high doses, there are side effects and sometimes patients don't tolerate it, but it's very powerful in helping addicts. Uh, here we see a case I found on Haley Haley disease where uh, we saw, it, it's an autoimmune condition of the skin. We saw that a low dose of naltrexone helped uh, reverse this uh, condition that really doesn't have much other treatment options out there. Uh, Shorn syndrome, um, another pretty cool case study, really looking at the inflammatory markers, the ESR and the CRP, and showing that LDN had benefit not only in improving the symptoms, but improving those inflammatory markers. So we had objective measurement that LDN was actually working and doing something, which is quite powerful. Um, why did this patient improve? Well. Um, we, we see that uh, it inhibits microglia activity. So microglia are immune cells in the central nervous system. When stimulated, produce inflammatory products that may be associated with pain, fatigue, cognitive dysfunction like brain fog, sleep, sleep and mood disorders. Low-dose naltrexone inhibits toll-like receptors that are found in microglia cells. As a result, the production of inflammatory substances declines with resulting symptomatic improvement. So very cool potential use in Shorin's uh, syndrome. Researchers at the Pennsylvania State University College of Medicine have been really driving many of the studies here. And they're finding it's useful and inexpensive and safe in Crohn's, autoimmune conditions, and even cancers. So let's talk a little bit about potential cancers. So they're using it in ovarian cancer uh, in combination or alone uh, with uh, oncologic drugs like cisplatin. So it, it uh, binds to opioid-like growth factor. So it stimulates production of opioid-like growth factor. Uh, and that's how it works there. It's a bit complicated here. I'm not going to get too much into that. It's a bit too detailed. You can read the subject material if you're more interested in uh, cancer utilization with LDN. So here's some mechanistic theory as to why it works. It binds to toll like receptor 4, and it modulates some inf inflammatory cytokines. So, um, uh, you know, IL-1, uh, toll like interleukin receptor. Some of these same cytokines that are elevated in the you know who disease that we're not going to mention here because we don't want to get censored. Chronic pain. So we see uh, low-dose naltrexone as a novel anti-inflammatory treatment for chronic pain uh, conditions. It's safe and it helps many patients with fibromyalgia, complex regional pain syndromes, their ESRs, their CRPs, it goes down and their symptoms improve. It's really that straightforward. Uh, if we have symptomatic improvement and an ESR improving, that's not so much a placebo. Low-dose naltrexone for disease prevention and quality of life. So LDN for the treatment and prophylactis of various body disorders is discussed here. 
Accumulating evidence suggests that LDN can promote health supporting immune modulation, which may reduce various oncogenic and inflammatory autoimmune processes. Since LDN can upregulate endogenous opioid activity, it may also have a role in promoting stress resilience, exercise, social bonding, and emotional well being, as well as ameliorating a psychiatric problem such as autism and depression. It is proposed that LDN can be used effectively as a buffer for a large variety of bodily and mental ailments through its ability to beneficially modulate both the immune system and the brain neurochemistries that regulate positive effect. I'm amazed at the implications here for anxiety and depression. So what it does, it binds to opioid receptors in the brain and enhances endorphin release. So the same things that give us the runner's high. Well, I don't run, but runners get the runner's high. Now, these endorphins are released at night. So oftentimes, LDN is used at nighttime when the patient is going to sleep. At very low doses, obviously, we're not talking about the high doses here. So about one milligram, say, or 0 0.5, sometimes, uh, you know, 1.5 or even lower. So you use it at night, and it can enhance the endorphin release. Now, one of the problems is that sometimes patients who maybe have PTSD or some sort of trauma, you know, they might be at risk to using it at night because you're going to get sometimes vibrant dreams. And that's probably the biggest side effect with low-dose naltrexone is vivid, vibrant dreams. So it may be better to use it in the daytime for certain uh, patients and a, a, a psychiatric history may need to be taken before using this. Opioid growth factor, uh, receptor, let me study for later. okay, what is this? Ah, full thickness wound closers in rats. How interesting. Yeah, I saw this one and I was like, wait, what? Yeah, they're, rats improve their wound closures, so big gaping wounds, full thickness wounds, with nilodose naltrexone. Multiple sclerosis. So I'm seeing really good trials on this one here, so bigger trials. Patients with multiple sclerosis on naltrexone, they decrease their flares of MS. They decrease their spasticity. Their quality of life is improved. So this is so cool because MS doesn't have great treatments and the treatments are super expensive. You know, one one dose of medication can be like, you know, $4,000. It's absurd how expensive multiple sclerosis treatment is. And here we have a low cost medication that can help patients with MS. So here's a couple of the studies showing uh, the benefits of MS. Shum showing good marked improvement, some showing mm, negligible, but overall good improvement for MS symptoms with low dose naltrexone. Skin conditions. I'm seeing potential for eczema, those sort of conditions. Um, let's see what else here. Autism and psychiatry. Pretty cool stuff here. Uh, let's see. LDN was provided by a team of psychiatrists. Following Dr. Panskip's postulate of autism as a state with excessive endogenous opioid signaling, a randomized placebo-controlled trial including 10 children affected by autism and treated with 0 0.5 milligrams of LDN per kilogram per day. So that could be actually a bit high. Six children benefited, three were deemed strong responders, and analysis showed higher initial concentrations of vasopressin and serotonin in that group. At the end of this two-month counterbalance trials, serum beta endorphin levels of all patients tended closely to control values, but this was not investigated further. A recent randomized placebo-controlled trial evaluating 1 mg LDN taken twice daily as an add-on to dopaminergic antidepressant treatments in 12 depressed patients during three weeks. All outcome measures showed more positive effects in LDN-treated groups. Amazing. Love it. Ah, yes. So, well, let's talk about some things to think about if you're looking for a provider that can prescribe this. You also need to think about a pharmacy that can make this because LDN doesn't exist in an FDA approved form. So you actually need to find a pharmacist that can get the pure form of LDN. You know, you don't want a pharmacist just like smashing up a tablet of this and putting it in a capsule and giving it to you. You want a better form that doesn't have any additives in it. And then you want a pharmacist that can put it in a capsule in a really controlled environment so there's not, you know, pollutants in the air and you want the pharmacist to put in a um, a good filler you don't want a junk filler 
Um, safety and side effect profile, really well tolerated at LDN. I'm really not seeing too much uh, side effects at all, except the vibrant dreams if you're taking it at night. If that's really a problem, just take it earlier in the day. The price, it's cheap. And that's really where we have the downfall, downfall of naltrexone. So we're not going to get huge randomized controlled placebo controlled trials like the FDA likes to do for other certain profitable medications and these. So we're not going to get a huge trial on this. We're going to get some trials. We're going to get some good data. We're going to get a lot of case studies. We're going to get a lot of patient reports. So, yeah. That's where we're kind of at, and I, that's where I see naltrexone staying. It's going to be staying on mostly on the fringe of medicine. Not a lot of people have heard about this thing uh, because it's cheap, and you can't make a big profit off of this if you're a big pharmaceutical company. Uh, but I am seeing pharmaceutical companies combining LDN with other medications and then repurposing it in a, in a brand-name drug. So I saw one called Contrave, and it's bupropion, so Welbutrin. It's a really old antidepressant medication, and they're combining it with low-dose naltrexone. I think they put it at like 8 milligrams, which isn't necessarily a, a low-dose that I would use. And then they're, they're repurposing this and saying that it helps with weight loss and it helps with depression, and wow, what a great drug. And yeah, how interesting. So pharmaceutical companies are looking at this. I've seen them also using it in pain medications. So uh, they were looking at it at one point in a very, very low dose of naltrexone combined with an opiate-like medication. So very interesting. So naltrexone is used as an opiate uh, antagonist. So heroin addicts, when they shoot up heroin, they can't actually get high if they're taking like 50 to 100 milligrams of naltrexone a day. But when you put a naltrexone in a super low form, we're talking like 0.01 inside maybe an opiate medication, you can actually enhance the pain effects and decrease the addictive potential and side effects of the opiate. So I'm seeing some pharmaceutical companies looking into repurposing LDN in combination with others so they can sell it at a higher price. Um, so where can you learn more about LDN? Well, one great uh, way is to look up the LDNResearchTrust.org. They have, I'm going to just show you the website here because it, it's so cool. And also listen to the LDN Radio Podcast. I've been listening to the podcast everywhere I go. It's so cool. We There's like 350 uh, lectures, physicians, experts all over the world talking about using this medication, talking how they discovered it, and their, their success with their patients. And it's really inspiring to listen to these stories. So what we can do here, we can go here, you can go to the conditions list of LDN, and you can look up a condition that you have or maybe a family member has, and maybe you're, you're thinking maybe they can get treatment for this look at under let's look at dermatologic skin conditions uh, we can see a lot and typically I think you can click on one of these and look at all the evidence for them um, let's see endocrine disease let's look at where's Hashimoto's uh, here's Hashimoto's thyroiditis well maybe my computer's freezing but typically I think you can click on these and you can read all about the, uh, the research on them so yeah Definitely a great resource here. Uh, they have conferences every couple of years. They have um, they have pharmacies available locally to you, and then they have also uh, clinicians who prescribe it. And I'm a big proponent of it. I do prescribe it. We do that here at Iron Direct Primary Care. If you're interested in becoming a patient, you know, feel free to check out my website, irondpc.com. We have very low cost subscriptions. We serve patients all over Florida. And uh, you know, I'd love to talk to you about LDN as a potential therapeutic. Uh, we can look into your condition and see if there might be some applications to that. we be really uh, excited to research that for you all. So thanks for joining me today. hope you guys like this little lecture on LDN. I um, hope uh, maybe some providers listen to this too because the more people know about this, the better. I, think. I don't think it should be a secret. Uh, we need to get this information out there. I wasn't taught this in school. This is all, uh, you know, on my own time research, trying to find ways to help my patients. And I pretty much just stumbled across LDN. I heard it enough times, and I was like, all right, I gotta look into this thing. Why do I keep, why do I keep hearing about this? Let me see if it's real. It's real. This is really cool, and it's safe, it's effective, and you know, really good side effect profile. So it's definitely worth a try, I'd say. 
All right, talk to you all next time.